as Dr. Murli Bharadwaj, my job is to inspire you in the next couple of hours to recharge yourself, to be re-inclined to finish some of the high yield points for the NEED PG. What is the tough thing in preparation for NEED PG exam? Microbiology is the driest subject on this planet. We feel like a sort of an involutional depression to read two subjects, microbiology and SPM called sleep promoting medicine. But let me tell you, can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear? Kunjit, Keshav, Kushbu and many more. Can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you? <clears throat> yeah. So, gram positive organisms, gram negative organisms, how do we classify? What is the differentiating feature among them? Three to four classical bullets about each of these organisms. If you can be able to master in the next one hour, that is the best help I would have done to all of you. Now, how do you look at gram positive bacteria? Bacilli, cocci, and branching filaments, that's how we divide them. Bacilli can be aerobic or anaerobic. Give me one gram positive anaerobic bacillus. Classical example, Clostridium. Whereas Listeria, Cornibacterium, Bacillus, they are all called aerobic bacilli. Please don't forget, gram positive bacilli. Then, if you look at the branching filaments, once more they are divided into aerobic and anaerobic, which you have to be very clear. What is the aerobic branching filament which is gram positive? Nocardia. The moment the examiner asks you, gram positive branching filament, aerobic. Reflexly, you should answer it as nocardia. And nocardia is weakly acid fast. One more, one more special point about it. Whereas, if you look at anaerobic branching filament which is gram positive. Please don't forget actinomyces. Until this, the story is very easy. The whole challenge is which is aerobic cocci among the gram positive bacteria and how to differentiate between them is all the secret of microbiology. If you know this table, you have to mug this table. It is available in every book, every entrance review, available in Google, everywhere you go. It is nothing uh, coming up new. But how this table can sit into our brain when we are going for the neat PG, that is the differentiator between winner and loser of the microbiology part of the game of neat PG. Gram positive cocci among the aerobic you divide them whether they are catalase positive or catalase negative. Based on that, you will decide whether it is staphylococcus or streptococcus. Among streptococci, once more, you divide them into alpha hemolytic, which is partial hemolysis, beta hemolysis, which is complete hemolysis, gamma hemolysis, which is non hemolytic then among the alpha hemolytic you will look whether it is optochin sensitive or not suppose if it is optochin sensitive then typically the best example of a optochin sensitive gram positive aerobic alpha hemolytic streptococci is the streptococci pneumonia that should come to your mind and what is the one which is not optochin sensitive, the viridans group streptococci, streptococcus viridans is typically not optochin sensitive. That is what you have to basically remember. 
Then among the beta hemolytic, that is a complete hemolysis showing gram positive cocci, you should look whether they are bacitracin sensitive or not. That is the differentiator among the beta hemolytic streptococci. The one which is bacitracin sensitive is the one which is streptococcus pyogenes, the one which is called group A. Then that is the reason uh, rheumatic fever is caused by which organism? We say group A beta hemolytic streptococci. That means who is that group A? Sorry, uh, which one is called as group A beta hemolytic streptococci, streptococcus pyogenes? Then among the beta hemolytic, which is completely hemolyzing, which is not bacitracin sensitive, don't forget, it is the group B, which is also called streptococcus agalactase, is the one which you have to basically remember. Then gamma hemolytic, how do you differentiate among within the gamma hemolytic? You will look whether can it grow in the sea water. 6% NaCl, can it grow or it cannot grow, that is the differentiator. So, if it can be able to grow in the sea water, salt water, then that is the group D, which is also called enterococci. Whereas, if it cannot grow, then typically it is a streptococcus bovis like organism, which is called non enterococci. Whether enterococci or non enterococci, they are fundamentally not hemolytic, that is, they are gamma hemolytic. This is a simple table, doctor, especially streptococcus ka beta or paute children, grandchildren ko samajne, you should remember. So, how will you remember once more? Alpha hemolytic, you will differentiate with optochin sensitivity. Alpha optochin both are a ah, a ah, no easy to remember then beta hemolytic beta hemolytic is differentiated by bacitracin sensitivity b is bacitracin b is beta hemolytic that will differentiate the beta hemolytic organisms then gamma hemolytic gamma hemolytic is differentiated by the growth whether they can grow in salt or not so, this is the fundamental point, if you know that, you know entire, uh, at least gram positive world, you are the uncrowned king, that is what you can remember. Then if you look at staphylococci, you will look whether they are coagulase positive or coagulase negative. Based upon that, you will be knowing whether it is a staphylococcus aureus, which is positive or if it is not positive, then you look whether it is novobiosin sensitive or not. Novobiosin sensitivity, if it is there, then it is Staphylococcus epidermidis. And if it is not sensitive, then it is uh, Staphylococcus saprophyticus. So, this is one table, doctor. I am telling you, you just open Google in the images. You ask for streptococci, I mean the gram positive bacteria classification. There are so many ways of classifying and trying to remember, but I found this is the easiest way of uh, classifying. Come on, summarize. How do you differentiate alpha hemolytic organisms? Optochin sensitivity uh -uh, is what you need to remember. Beta hemolytic, bacitracin sensitivity differentiates. Gamma hemolytic, the differentiator is. 6% NaCl, can it grow or not? Then among staphylococci, it is a novobiosin sensitivity that differentiates between epidermidis, which is sensitive, and the saprophyticus, which is not sensitive. So, this is uh, a very important thing. Now, let us quickly go to each of the organism. <coughs> Rakesh is asking, can you please zoom in the text? Uh, that uh, figure which I have shown you is available in Google everywhere in the planet Earth. So, do not worry. But 
even without the table before you, you should close the eyes and remember. I am telling you, alpha hemolytic optogen sensitivity differentiator, beta hemolytic vesicrescin sensitivity, <coughs> gamma hemolytic NaCl, 6% NaCl whether it can grow or not. <coughs> then among catalase negative staphylococci, novobiosin sensitivity is the differentiator. That's all. Everything else you will remember, but just until next 2-3 months you have to remember. 